January, Oklahoma won the school's seventh national championship. This year, the Sooners are stocking number eight. So far, they've answered every question. Their winning streak stands at 20. Today, Eric Crouch welcomes OU to Nebraska's Field of Dreams. And the greeting committee here is known simply as the Black Shirts. Last year in Norman, Crouch and Nebraska opened a two touchdown lead on the Sooners. But a circus catch by Andre Wolfolk sparked the comeback and the Sooners roll. Now for the 80th time, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Oh, what a day this is in Lincoln, Nebraska, folks. Dial B for perfect. I mean, we're talking 60 degrees. We're talking a renewal of a classic. It's Oklahoma and Nebraska. The BCS standings came out this week, and look who heads the list. OU and Nebraska. The Cornhuskers only three and a half points behind them. The BCS, of course, will determine which two teams will play in the Rose Bowl for the national championship. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. I guess everybody who's a college football fan's got a favorite Oklahoma-Nebraska game. Mine happened to be 30 years ago. I'm sure that Oklahoma fans have got a different one. But through the years, these two great schools have slugged it out. And what a rivalry it's been. You know, the two teams respect each other so much. That's one of the differences in this great rivalry. And this could be just the first of two meetings this year. Remember now, these two schools could well play for the Big 12 championship December 1st in Dallas. It's one of the grand entrances in college football. And the sea of red welcomes the Cornhuskers. football. My partner Gary Danielson is here and Gary with two great defenses but the quarterbacks are such a contrast one experienced and one young. Yeah and really the, the great part of college football Brent are these contrasts between senior quarterbacks newly starting quarterbacks different option offenses pass offenses this game is Eric Crouch's I think though they're going to run the ball he's a veteran at it they've got the advantage at, at quarterback but Oklahoma has a new quarterback Jason White we saw him against Texas came off the bench but this is a different game this is a game as a starter he's had to deal with the media he's had to deal with all the pressure all week we will see what will determine it Brent you talked about the two great defenses I think it's going to be the offhand of each quarterback how well Crouch throws and how well White runs the ball Oklahoma won the toss and they have deferred so Nebraska will take the ball to start the game and Tim Duncan the senior from Clinton Oklahoma with the ball on the tee and Josh Davis. Deep to return. And we ask Eric Crouch what he wants to establish in the early going against Oklahoma's great defense. The biggest thing is, is just recognizing there are different defensive formations that they're going to come up in the line and blitz. I know you're always looking for what they did last year. Uh, after watching the tape, they were successful in a lot of ways from what they did. So uh, you're, it'll be interesting to see what they do. So number seven wears it in honor of John Elway, who he worshipped as a youngster growing up in Omaha, under center with the power <laughs> Gets the game's first carol as we take a look at the backs and receivers for Nebraska. The injuries Jack told you about. Judd Davies with an ankle. John Gibson with an ankle. He's playing. And Tracy Wistrom with the knee. We'll see how that holds up. So the fullback is Judd Davies. And what a difference he could make. Sophomore from Omaha. Second down and four after the six-yard run by Darren Dieter on first down. Now Crouch runs the option the other way. Diedrich with a high pitch, didn't have a chance, and guess who made that hit? Roy Williams, number 38, makes his first whack. So here they are, folks, the 18-wheelers. That's a key to whatever success Nebraska will or will not enjoy here today, believe me. And Tommy Harris, number 97, he looks to take Judd Davies or whoever plays fullback away from Nebraska. And I see Wistrom already yep. going off on the far side. 
So Wistrom's out of the game. Now it is third down and seven after the loss. From the shotgun, Deidre can't handle it. It's three and out. And there's that OU defense again. So the OU secondary. And Roy Williams already has made his first big play in this game. Folks, he's got to be the leader for the Jim Thorpe. Given every year to the best defensive back in college football. What a whale of a player he is. And now Kyle Larson trots onto the field to punt. And Curtis Fagan. Return number 19's punt, and Oklahoma could have excellent starting field position. Something that they have had all season long. They come through on Larson. Oh, they were close in the middle. Here's Fagan. Craver yanks him down. A great tackle at the 38 yard line. Now, the young man and Jack Aroot went down to Norman and asked him what he would try to do in the first series. Uh, the first series, you know, we want to be, uh, we want to be tough. We, you know, we want to drive down the field and score. You know, show them, show them that we, you know, we can move the ball on them all the time. Well, here comes the young man. People who talk about who's going to win this game said there was a big edge for Nebraska quarterback. We'll see. Jason White, Lincoln, Nebraska, with the crowd howling, with that spread formation. He'll throw it on first down, and it's intercepted by Kramer. Kramer's got it. To the 25. The first turnover. Oklahoma comes out doing what they do best. They're in the shotgun the whole game. Good protection for White. Steps up and throw it, but when you have great coverage, and that was great coverage by Craver, the ball was slightly behind the play, the receiver that time, but Craver, that's as good as you can cover a guy. Jason White thought his receiver would beat Craver. He did not win that battle of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Craver makes the game's first big play. So Keo Craver, the outstanding DB, and a first down with three wall and Castle in that backfield. And Blouch was hit right on the handoff by Jimmy Wilkerson, the defensive end who also is a stand-up rush man and makes a lot of tackles for a loss for this well-coached OU defense. Fred, I think that's the most underrated part of this Oklahoma football team is their athleticism on their front four. Wilkerson, the, the budding superstar Tommy Harris, are two great football players that kind of get lost in the shuffle with all the big names out there. I think Gary, they didn't have any time to even get anything no. going that time. Penetration on the option. Crouch back as a gun, and he'll keep it himself, but there's no crease. He was sealed up at the 30-yard line. They are not giving him any daylight. That was Brandon Moore. Now, Brandon Moore is the only member of the OU team who was here when they were embarrassed 69 to 7 I believe the the score was Brent great matchup here Fonati on the true freshman watch from freshman Harris spin out of this block that is a tremendous young football player on the best offensive lineman for Nebraska so here's your third and long and the Huskers have been unable to move the ball on this defense slant pass high dropped so it's fourth down and will Solich try a long field goal here as Derek Strait the defensive back I think made knocked, the play for the Sooners. I think he knocked it down. I, I think he snapped that right out of the receiver's hand that time. Two great plays, two tremendous defenses with playmakers all over the field. Derek Strait kind of matches Keel Craver's play and snaps this ball right out of the receiver's hand. Watch the slant coming across. The ball is caught and snapped away from the receiver. Beautiful play. You can't do it any better than that by Strait. Playmakers, playmakers, playmakers. I guess that's Joint how you field win. position here. They're going to punt. Kyle Larson. And, and so Solich electing to play field position against the young quarterback who's already thrown one interception. They're trying to down it inside the 10, and they've done it. So a battle of field position unfolding in Lincoln. Timeout. Oklahoma's football. How good is the OU defense? They've had 
six plays for Nebraska minus one yard in the early going Ronaldo works you would think now that OU would try to settle into a little bit of a running game and confusion by the young quarterback on the handoff and you can see that Ronaldo works was also with Quentin Griffin and here are his targets today Smith is tight end has been his go to guy we talked about Quentin Griffin outside we got Mark Clayton out there and Fagan has already returned a punt Josh Norman and Antoine Savage the big guy so he has the weapons but so far he's been unable to use any of them and now it is second and long and all we've got to say is there are jitters here for sophomore Jason White in the early going. They try to settle down now from the end zone high and incomplete. Here are your thoughts about the young quarterback as we take a look now. The offensive line, Frank Romero, the All-American, hasn't given up a sack again this year. But Jared Fields is a freshman over there at right tackle, and he's got to take on Chris Kelsey in one of the key matchups in this game. Here's your backers, and they're looking for Quentin Griffin when they go to that running game. But it'll be Kelsey who will attempt to tee it off here against Fields on third and long. Great protection. High percentage completion. A few yards close to the first down. Very nice move before John Clanton, the nose man, was able to get back defensively, Gary. And uh, OU will, will punt. And the secondary for Nebraska, they'll be busy. They'll be under pressure. Yeah, two of the four of the six guys that will play back there all day, they'll go up to a dime. Good job. You mentioned it, Brent. Stunt by Nebraska on that third down play, and they handled that snunt, stunt that Baylor gave Oklahoma such big problems with. on him and he gets it off to Gross who didn't signal for a fair catch and gets ripped down inside the 13. What a folks Jeff Ferguson is a wonder back there as a punter. Watch this. He did it in the Air Force game. He did it in the national championship game when he took a safety right there. He saves maybe 75 yards in field position. What a play by Ferguson. I'll tell you, you don't have to have a good average when you make plays like that. I'm going to tell you, folks, Ryan Daniel, a backup tight end for Oklahoma, may have saved the day. When we take another look at that, you'll see the block. And he gave Ferguson enough time to capture the football and get it off. The next time you see it, watch 82 throw a block on that play. Couch battles his way to the 20. And now take a look, folks, at 82. He's got to hold the fort on that side. There's the snap. Look at him go to work. No penetration, and Ferguson's able to get it off. Well done by Daniel. And we come to the end of the quarter. We're scoreless, and ABC Sports presentation returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Crouch under fire gets it off to Thomas for about six yards. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. I told you my favorite OU Nebraska game 30 years ago, the game of the century. Folks, who were the head coaches that day, the offensive coordinators that day, and the ABC announcers? Game of the century 30 years ago. Come on now. You Sooner fans, your you Husker out, fans, right? Get your oh, some out. of these guys are all over <laughs> it right now. We'll have the answer for you later. And I know Jack Aroot's got an interesting piece of footage from that game. Man, that was a great football game. They played that one around Thanksgiving time. I still remember the cover of Sports Illustrated. Probably got around someplace. Crouch goes back, got time, going deep to Thomas. Thomas in a battle, and it falls incomplete because Brandon Everidge, number seven, was right there. Brandon Everidge, such a factor in the run game. The question was, could he stay disciplined in the play-action pass game? This time, Thomas, who lined up in the slot on the play-action game, goes down. But what a nice job Everidge does of looking back, not panicking, not just grabbing the receiver, finding the ball and making the deflection. Another athletic play by a defensive secondary. Let's see how OU handles this punt. 
Takes a Nebraska bounce and faking on a high hop. Rip down. Gross. He returned the favor. Remember when he got ripped down? Well, that time he was the gunner on the cover. I look for Oklahoma to start taking some easy throws. Over the three years of the Stoops era in Oklahoma, the quarterbacks have been completing 63% of their passes. White is 3 for 10 today. Yeah, 30% won't do it, will it, Gary? No. First down for White. A little inside handoff. And Griffin breaks free. 35. A busted pass. The linebacking core. And uh, Gross along with Booker, but it's a 16-yard gain. That's three carries for 40 yards. Hey, Jack Arun, how's it sound down on the field, my friend? Well, Brent, let me tell you, the crowd noise is almost deafening down here. And in fact, it has created somewhat of a problem for this young offensive line for OU. Mark Mangino went over some of the hand signals, and now they're going to go from center and guard out to the tackles and then to the wideouts with hand signals. And you can see that they're trying to communicate down there right now. Just what Jack was telling you yeah, about. That's one of the reasons Howard Duncan was moved to guard right there. They're going to stay on the ground, but nothing much doing. There's the black shirts hold. Schlechter making the stop. Howard Duncan, the senior, started the year at offensive tackle. Because a new center, Vince Gimson, is a true freshman at center, the change was made to Duncan at guard to help a little bit with that communication, Brent. Second down and eight. The nose man is taken out again. That means it's a three-man defensive line. In the middle, time. Got Smith again. First down. Beautiful. He read his tight end coming across. Led him perfectly that time. Nice throw by Jason White for 15 yards. Love that matchup. Big athletic tight end on a smallish corner. Even though those corners are used to covering those wide receivers out there on, uh, with a lot of space, the tight end can pressure up, can handle a linebacker, whatever. The movement, the increase passing to the tight end, I think has been a big difference in this sooner offense. All right, Oklahoma playing with half a field right now. Fresh set of downs, and they're at midfield. Quarterback draw. A first down. He hit the marker beautifully with Burrow in pursuit. Craig, Craig Bull, defensive coordinator, did not want to go to an all-out blitzing game, a la Texas, a la Kansas State. I think he will soon think that we need to come after this guy. Setting back and allowing Oklahoma to run their finesse plays, the draw, the quarterback draw, those little shovel passes, that plays right into the Oklahoma game plan. Mark Mangino is calling a real good game with Chuck Long up in the booth. There's the big fella over there, and he's got the Sooners on the move. Here's Griffin. He's stacked up that time. Mangino knows that he doesn't want the youngster whipping it in the air 35, 36 times. He doesn't have Josh Hypo back there. He wants to go ahead and make sure that they respect the run. By Jimmy Burrow. The substitution package is in now. Chris Tony gives him an extra fullback in that backfield. Second down and ten. They want to make sure that Jason has enough time. They surround him with a couple of running backs. Nebraska has their three-man look in. They've been blitzing off this. And there's two blockers back there. They're going to send him out. They release him. Here's White looking for an open man. He may take off. He'll drop into the open man. Griffin out of bounds. Beautiful by Jason White. He made them think he was going to take off, and then he, he dropped hit. it to the open running back. And he and got Griffin goes 16 yards, and White is down on the sideline after making the play, and that will probably mean that Nate Hibble will come in for a Absolutely. play. Absolutely. Here he comes. Eight is up. There he is, ready to go. Nate Hibble took that pounding in the Kansas State game and then came back with the Texas game. But as ja Jason White came out of the pocket, Nebraska had dropped into a zone and he kind of suckered those linebackers up and let go right at the last second dropping this pass off but after he let it go about a step I don't know if he pulled a muscle or what yes he oh, did yeah, look he like he pulled a muscle 
Yes, absolutely. I thought maybe he got hit over there. He the twisted side. his ankle or knee. Yes, it looked like he twisted his knee after he let go of the ball that time, and his left knee gave way. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Jack will check in on that because Hibble himself has taken a severe pounding. Remember this against K-State? I mean, it was relentless as the Wildcats sold out. Then Texas came after him. They got up in his shoulder area. And now it's Nate Hibble's game, at least for the uh, time being. He's taking some practice snaps as White is already being helped back to the locker room. So here's Hibble's first play. Fakes the end around. Pulls back and a toss to the end zone. Tight end. Incomplete. There'll be a penalty. They'll take interference. That was going to be a touchdown that time. McPherson felt he had no other choice but to take the interference. Remember, it won't be first and goal. But it will certainly be an automatic first down. It was a nice play by Hibble yeah, as they fake the end call? around. And uh, there's a great opening call by Mangino. Pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Previous spot. Automatic first down. Hibble just getting rid of that ball. He had Trent Smith wide open. Smith had to stop for the ball, but McPherson says, uh uh, if you're going to get a touchdown, you can't get a cheap one. You got to run it in from the seven yard line. And you think that Oklahoma won't try, eh? Here they come from the seven with Quentin Griffin. Remember, this fellow's got a nose for the end zone. He's right off to the right. Nebraska better be aware of him. Show a little motion. And here comes 22. Stopped. McPherson, guilty of interference, makes the tackle. A defensive battle in Lincoln, Nebraska, between the top two teams in the BCS poll. Oklahoma one, Nebraska two. And this could be the first of two meetings this year. And both these teams could wind up at Dallas playing for the Big 12 championship on December 1st. Starting quarterback Jason White, injury to his left knee, ice being applied. And by the looks of it, he won't be back for a while. So Nate Hibble, who lost his job to White, has taken over. Second down and goal, going to throw for it. Tight end, wraps it up, touchdown OU. So off the bench, Nate Hibble drives the Sooners to their first touchdown of the game. And Trent Smith, the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma, the big tight end, has been a factor in this game. It's his third catch. Coming the guy, isn't he? Nebraska had it defended right there, but Hibble does a nice job of dropping this ball over the linebacker. Nice touch on the play. Throw it to your big guy. And Trent Smith has really emerged. We did that Kansas State game, right, Brent? I was begging him to throw to Trent Smith. Maybe they saw the tape of it afterwards. Tim Duncan. Adds the extra point. Oklahoma strikes first. And given how their defense is playing, that could be enough. But here he is. Also, he's a pilot. Look at him pilot that touchdown. Nice landing, too, Trent. Timeout. Doesn't your heart go out to Jason yes. White? Here he is. He, he just earns the starting job. Now he's suffered a knee injury. Helmet off on the sideline, ice being applied to it. Hibble comes back in, and guess what? Oklahoma scores a few plays later. All right, here's a kickoff to Josh Davis out to the 20-yard line. Folks, how good is this Oklahoma defense? I want you to take a look at this Nissan drive summary. Nebraska can't do anything. They punted six times here in this game. 52 total yards. And on their longest drive, 20 yards, 18 of it came in one pass. As it kind of ball yet today. Here's the toss to Diedrich. He won't get anything against that defense. They just gang up on him. Dvorak is right there. Jack Aroot, what about the injuries? Well, Brent, as a policy, Oklahoma does not release information during the game about injuries, but it's fairly evident that you won't see Jason White back at quarterback. They have examined his left knee, have iced it down considerably. And one thing to remember, Brent, when in the Oklahoma sidelines, what they do during practice, the starting quarterback gets 70% of the snaps. I'll update you as well on Wistrom. He's just a little lame like he was before. All right, Jack, thank you as crouch. 
This time he gets the ball into Thomas's hands. Thomas is the leading receiver. That's a first down. He becomes the go-to guy, the basketball player, with three catches for 27 yards. So Thomas now is Crouch's number one target. And if they're going to climb back in, they'll have to be the guy, it looks like. Yeah, you know, of the 70 passes that Nebraska has completed coming into this game, 52 of them have gone to Thomas, Wistrom, or Gibson. And he really only threw the ball to three different people. And one of those guys is Nick. Off the belly, G. And they bring Thunder around, and Crouch pulls out to pass it again wide open. Cross midfield, puts it in the hands of Troy Hassebrock, the wingback from right here in Lincoln. That's 19 yards. Hasbrook's going to come right across there. He's almost lined up in a tight end position. Play action pass. You see Crouch on the right. Go down the option. Come back. Hard to get these play action passes going from the option when you're not running the option well. Oklahoma isn't buying anything but the option game. They want to put hits on the right. Same formation again. So it's first down. And here's Crouch. There is the pitch to Thunder. And he thunders to the turf because of Derek Strait. All right, let's go back now on the Aflac trivia question. We ask you the game of the century. Who are the head coaches, offensive coordinators, and ABC announcers? All right, there you are. Chuck Fairbanks <laughs> and Bob Devaney with the head. How about the offensive coordinators? Barry Switzer and Tom Osborne. And the announcers, of course, Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson. Well, Add that call for ABC. There you are, the legendary Oklahoma coach there on the left, Bud Wilkinson, and, of course, Chris Schinkel, play-by-play -play guy, he's probably watching today, Chris. Everybody wants to say hello. He's bounced back, fires for nine yards over to the uh, right sideline. Derek straight again over there. Eric Crouch is left. very underrated as a thrower. I think if he would have came into college football running an offense with that spread attack, that maybe like Nebraska or Clemson, excuse me, Northwestern or Clemson uses where he had to throw the ball, I think you'd see Eric Crouch throw for a lot of yards. This by far the most impressive Nebraska drive of the day. Diedrich for the first down. So this time, the Nebraska coaches use the pass to loosen things up. Then they come back for the run. The crowd back into it now, enthusiastic. They trail it by seven. But for the first time today, the Cornhuskers are sustaining a drive. Can they finish, Howard? And they've done it with the pass. They've loosened up this Oklahoma defense. I don't know if Frank Solich in Nebraska believes they can run their base offense three, against three, four, this great three, Oklahoma three. rush defense. <laughs> Fake. Crouch keeps it. But guess who's there? Derek Strait. You know, that last completion was for Ringelberg of Nebraska. Kyle Ringelberg, number 86, has been played. As Crouch comes back to Westbrook. First down, his first completion of the game. And he's out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. What a gamer, huh? Big game, didn't practice all week. Said he could go, limped around. He's been a decoy the whole game, but just enough. You got a tight football game with a chance to win the Big 12 championship and the national championship. You go. This is a clutch drive. 17-yard gain for Whistler. The ball is inside the 20. Deidre cuts for an Sets up the power game for the Huskers after that 16-yard run. Well, it's been the passing game that has opened up the running game for Nebraska. You'll see it right here in a gash inside. What a run by Dietrich. From Canada to Nebraska through the Oklahoma defense. What a read on that one. Not a great receiver is Dietrich, but an outstanding running back. Eric Crouch will be looking for touchdown number 56. He already has the NCAA record. First to set Dietrich into the end zone. So he comes right back with Darren Dietrich. And the Huskers. An extra point away after an impressive drive following the OU touchdown. 
stacked eye, two lead backs, two full backs, and Dietrich basically kind of walks into the end zone right there. He does the dive just to be safe. Deadlocked at seven as Josh Brown adds the extra point. They couldn't do it running. They do it passing. They go 80 yards in 10 plays. We're deadlocked. Timeout. Almost three quarters of the 80 yards through the air for Eric Crouch. So the Nebraska coaches adjust. They see they've got daylight. By using a double tight end formation, they can break receivers open, and Crouch does the rest. A lot of it off play action, but he started off the drive just dropping back and throwing. Al you looking for a savage return. He's got speed, and there's a penalty flag down out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Hibble. Back in the gun inside the 10. Gonna throw off the fake high and incomplete Josh Norman, the intended target. Nate Hibble did not get a lot of practice time. I don't even know if he's 100%. We saw him throw very poorly after he hurt that shoulder. We saw the lob to Trent Smith. That was an easy one. Let's see if Hibble has it all together yet. Here's the third down. Sooners don't want to give up field position. There's Trent Smith again. What a go-to guy he's been turned out to be. Short of the first down, though. Yeah, just short. And there goes White back to the Oklahoma locker room with an injury to the left knee. And we hope that's not serious. But it, it didn't look good, did it, folks, the way it was no. on the sideline? Well, think the about bench. this, though, Brent. All the work you put in the offseason, oh. the battle he's had with Hibble, he wins the job, a huge football game, and you're limping off because you twist your neck. Now Ferguson. Drives it. Gross is back. Cuts back. He's got daylight. Midfield. Here he comes. Brought down. 28-yard line from behind. Brandon Moore saves the day for OU, but it's a 33-yard return, and Nebraska's in business, folks. Gross the corner, and you can see the effect here. Right there, it was just a little late of the gunner coming down the field and slowing down not to get that halo infraction. Some a lot of people now, Brent, are thinking, let's take the five yards and get inside the halo because when you slow down, you give an athlete like that an opportunity to run it back. They'll stick with Dietrich, hole offside, and he explodes for a first down, just short of the 15-yard line. Matt Milt Tenapore, one of the great line coaches in the history of college football, folks, is upstairs in the booth. I'll tell you right now. That he has adjusted completely the way they're blocking the front, and they're opening huge holes right now. Watch Steve Crewell right there, number 45, in practice Thursday. Both fullbacks. Judd Davies didn't even practice, and Crewell, number 45, was limping all day. Both fullbacks have sucked it up. Crewell is in the game, and what a block he got on the knees. Fonati helping lead the way. Dietrich is hit this time. Yes, he has. Kalmus <laughs> comes across, tackles him for a loss. Rocky Kalmus coming in the back door on that play. Frank Stolich, he said, those linebackers from Oklahoma do such a good job of coming in behind the play with their speed and making it. You saw Kalmus do it on that play right there. And had a couple more for Kalmus here today, too. Tackles for a loss. Second down and 12. They'll put Thunder Collins in motion. They give it to him, and Thunders! Down at the 15-yard line with Wolfolk, that cornerback who also plays wide receiver, number 17, making the stop. Wolfolk, who did such a great job against Texas, but you watch Wistrom right there on the outside against Brandon Moore, the, off uh, the outside linebacker, and I thought Collins had some room, and Wolfolk, such a valuable player, being able to do two things. We saw him lock up on Roy Williams, the outstanding receiver for Texas. The guy's got big-time talent, and it looks like he can tackle also. Here's Crouch. Thomas juggles and held on at the 10, but he's short of the first down, and Nebraska's got the field goal unit ready. 
Tried to do the wide receiver scene to screen to Thomas that time. Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator, backed his defense off. You see the end right here drop, and as receiver comes in, he almost is in the way of that play. Wilkerson's going to come in, back off right there, reads the play, and Thomas juggles and catches. This for the lead, 27 yards for Josh Brown. Makes it good. Nebraska's first lead. They trailed it by seven, then they tied it, then they kicked the field goal to take the lead here. I thought that was a big stop by the Oklahoma defense following the punt return. Brandon Moore, remember, makes the tackle by the shoulder pads to save the touchdown, and then the defense stinks and makes just the field goal. Now, how did they get the name the Cornhuskers? Well, real simple. A sports writer in 1900 said, I don't like bug eaters anymore. He started to call them the Cornhuskers. And you know, Jack, today the pheasant season is opening in Nebraska. They haven't harvested all that corn, and it's causing some of my hunter friends some problems. Most of them are probably in the uh, small towns right now. Over there in those cafes and saloons scattered across this great state watching this game. Oklahoma has only thrown for 63 yards. They have to find their passing game to win. Nate Hibble replaced the injured Jason White under center. Griffin goes nowhere. He's jumped by Burrow, the middle linebacker. Sort of an awkward take from center yes, it that was. time, Gary. You can see the lack of practice time for Nate Hibble. Not sure again how healthy that arm is. It's his left shoulder, but it seems to have affected his throwing. Doesn't look like those little finesse run plays are going to go against this great Nebraska defense. A strike for the first down, and he puts it in the hands of Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman from Arlington. Well, Mark Clayton caught eight passes last week, but you can see, you sync up the quarterback with nobody in his face this time. Kibble gets the step into his throw and a perfect route by the freshman going just beyond the first down marker and catching it. That's the good communication. And you know, folks, that was a big play. Oklahoma may not be able to finish it off, but Nebraska was going to have field position with a minute and a half to go. Now OU keeps it. They try to get in on Hibble. They force him out of the pocket on the move and a diving reception at the 49-yard line by Clayton. For a first down, Oklahoma with 108 at 16 yards, and Clayton now starting to step up. Fields does a nice job right here, pushing Kelsey by. Hibble feels that pressure, moves up, and then finds the angle. Hibble throwing off the run. Beautiful throw. Again, on the move, and he just threw it away wisely. <laughs> Kelsey won that one, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> Well, one side's pretty solid. Frank Romero, number 63, has not given up a sack all year. You mentioned that. But this other side right here, this is a problem. Kelsey knows he's got a freshman. He goes oh, inside boy. this time. Hibble did a good job of just making second and ten. His feet. Yep. He's got to keep those feet. Well, he, he, just... he's all right going wide. Yeah. But the... Is he pushing? He, you know, he can extend. And he's probably pretty strong. And Kelsey knows with the quickness, he's not keeping those feet moving. And shuffling over there on him. Oh, he'll learn. He's a young one. Second down. Oh, he's got time. Got a man wide open at the 30-yard line. First down, Oklahoma, Antoine Savage. Now, remember, Hibble and Savage hooked up for the two big touchdowns against Kansas State. That's Savage's two big scores, and there's a 32-yard reception. And if nothing else, you figure Oklahoma is going to get even with a Duncan field goal because of that play right there. Nebraska tried to run an end stunt, tackle end stunt. They all ran into each other that time. Oklahoma didn't have to block anyone, and then it was a crossing route in the secondary. Nebraska lost the guy. Clear open play. Now, Trent Smith has a huge size advantage as a receiver. He's off the line to Hibble's right. On first down, they'll bring that end around again. Double reverse, throw back. Hibble oh would have walked in from the 15-yard line as Mark Clayton threw it back off the double reverse, and Hibble simply slipped with the end zone and the crosshairs. Here's the passer right over here, coming around one way. He's going to go downfield. 
Kimball got knocked down. That's really what changed it a bit. And then he slipped. Oh, my. That's a walk into the end zone. What a play. What a dialed play for Oklahoma. Man, Gino makes the call of the day, and they just don't <laughs> score off it. Now it's second down and 10. Here's that matchup right here, you said, with Trent Smith. Seven seconds to go, and the Sooners with a pair of timeouts. Watch this throw. Beautiful route to the corner this time. Again, no one in Hibble's face. When he has time to throw the ball, he is accurate with that football. We saw it early in the year, and big plays from Nate Hibble. And you got to say a lot for Chuck Long getting his backup quarterbacks ready. We saw it against Texas, and now we see the Nate Hibble here today. Don't get a lot of snaps, but they have been ready mentally to play. Griffin is there. Tony is a blocker. It's a first down. Here's Griffin. Stopped. He's got that great nose. The end zone. Timeout, Oklahoma. They send in the timeout for the bench. Lance Donnelly, the tight end, just raced up to the line judge. Called the timeout. You can go pass. You can go pass run. So you save your timeout for the field goal, or you can go run. Call a timeout and pass. And then if you don't have it, you say four down for a field. Got that option formation in. Here's Griffin. He's stuffed. Kelsey. Well, he beat Fields that time badly. That was a very surprising call to go as a freshman tight end tackle. No, instead of Romero. Guy. I wonder if it was a check with me. I saw him check, but you can see Kelty just runs right around Fields. Very, very surprising call to go at the freshman against that good football player. So the Sooners use their last time out. Now they got 23 seconds to go. Now and they've I got like third down. So now you throw yes. and you throw it out of the end zone if you don't have anything you kick the field goal now so you take fade. a shot at yes. the end zone and uh, then you kick the field goal if it's unsuccessful that's pretty easy strategy to figure out here yes. right, one on one, real nice up here huh he's looking for Clayton and they'll settle for the field goal coming in on him was Dion Booker that time on the blitz he got the pressure on Hibble Smith Booker was lined up over Smith, but he came off. You see Booker. McPherson is right there, and there's that little chart. That's what I like to throw down there. You get a tight end against a smaller corner. I like that play. Force their official to call offensive pass interference. So here's Duncan for the tie. 20 yarder. Number 40, Tim Duncan. We are deadlocked at 10. Let's see. Nice little somersault there by Duncan at the end, and uh, it's 10-10. Oklahoma and Nebraska. John and Terry, take it away in New York. Well, Oklahoma will get the ball to uh, start the second half, Gary, and we just saw Jason White try it on his knee, had his helmet on, but uh, it looked like that knee was still pretty no, bad No, couldn't shape. do it. He made one throw, and he yeah. walked back. I mean, Quarterbacks have been the story. Oklahoma has stopped Eric Crouch. He's only run the ball six times, Brent. Half of those, three of them, for negative yards. And, of course, Oklahoma loses a quarterback, and Nate Hibble comes in and does some good things for him. Yeah, obviously, Crouch, the focus of the OU defense. And what a defense this is. We could point out several players who have made big plays time after time in the first half. Really has. You, they come at you in waves. You think it's Calmus, you think it's Roy Williams, but they got tremendous players at each level, and that's really what makes any great defense, not just one good guy, but about eight playmakers. Now with the wind at their back, OU decides to take a knee. I should say the wind was at the kicker's back, so as to not confuse you. And here is our Chrysler drive summary here. Look at that. Remember, Frank Solich said, I won't be nervous about punting the ball. Oklahoma has not started one drive in plus territory. That's how you get to play good defense. You know, you would think the way this game has gone that it will turn on a defensive player. He will make the key 
play as we check our halftime stats here. Yeah, most of those 140 yards passing, a good golf of them was in the last drive. And look at Nebraska, more passing yards offhand than rushing yards. So Nate Hibble, who came in off the bench, led OU to their touchdown. He'll run the quarterback draw to a wide open middle of the field. Breaks free to the 39-yard line. 19 yards for him on that uh, return. We go to Jack Aruth. Well, Brad, Dr. Frank Solich, he was very happy with the performance of his team, but he did say that he saw that Oklahoma's defense was allowing him to pass. He says Crouch should put it up in the air more. Meanwhile, when I talked to Bob Stoops, Stoops said he was very pleased with the performance of his team. In fact, told me he doesn't see any change in the offensive game plan in the second half with Hibble at the controls rather than White. Except Nate Hibble's limping a little bit after that run. On first down for Hibble and the Sooners. Bobbles a snap. Comes up firing. Intercepted on a beauty. A ricochet. Sweetie gets his hands on it. Turnover. What a great interception for Irwin Sweeney. The bounce last year went to Oklahoma. The bounce this year as Hibble catches the snap, bobbles the snap, picks up the ball. But there it is. The ball is thrown. Again, slightly behind. There's the bounce right off the face mask, and Sweeney gets it. Savage goes up. I think it hits him in the face mask. It does right in the helmet. And Sweeney gets the tip. Remember, Brent, a year ago, the tip went the other way. Yes, it did now. Coach brings Thunder Collins around. He's got the corner. Look out, sideline. Tripped up from behind by Derek Stray, who saved a touchdown as Collins was thundering for the end zone. What a great block on Roy Williams. John Clem right here. Watch him get Williams. A backup in for one play. You, your whole game plan, Clem, just come in and get Roy Williams. Thunder Collins will go down the sideline and Derek Strait, another save. The second save of the day. Brandon Moore had one. Watch. Williams will come in. There's the block. Look at that block from the wide receiver. And he stayed high, too. And Collins is shaken up on the play. He's got well, here's Collins heading for the end zone. Straight, wax him across the bottom of the leg, and he was injured on the play, off on the sideline, and now Diedrich pounds the middle of the defense to the 21-yard line with that run by Collins. Nebraska now has rushed over 100 yards in this game. They've rushed for 104 yards, well below their average. You want to see Nebraska power football? Watch Bonatti come around. Watch the fullback come in there. ISO backside, number 77, number 45. This is power. Oh, oh man. Second down for the Huskers. Diedrich again. Middles open, stumbling to the six-yard line. Where he is down, if he could have maintained his balance, he would have scored for the Huskers. But it's a first and goal, and they probe the middle with yeah. the running game. 14 yards here. Same play coming back, but watch Brandon Everett. He finds the umpire and loses the back. Watch him get right up inside there, and he kind of loses him right there. Right behind him, peekaboo, coming out the other way, and Everett can't find him. There's a first and goal. <laughs> Are you looking for a goal line stand after the interception? Nebraska trying to score deeper. Three straight Under plays. Three with Roy Williams making the stop. Same play three times in a row. Rocky Kelmis is starting to understand the big guy, number 77. Benotti had 32 pancake blocks. That's how you do it. You keep running ISO. Jack Aru, what's the situation with Thunder Collins? Well, you should expect to see Thunder Collins back, Brent. It's his left ankle. The doctor checked it over, said it was all stable. They're going to retape him up, and he'll be ready to go. Castle is the fullback. <laughs> Coach has got it, and OU reads it. Down at the 10-yard line because of Jimmy Wilkerson. Another negative play. You wonder if Nebraska didn't get a little too cute. The way they've been running the ball inside. This is Jimmy Wilkerson right here. Watch the coaches at the top. They know it. They know Crouch is the guy. Always keep your eye on the crowd right there. Yes, exactly the way I told him. 
both coaching staffs inside goal line territory got a little too cute running the ball right behind a freshman and trying a trick play down near the goal line. Nickel package in for OU. Thomas has been the favorite target. Crouch keeps it. In trouble. Diving incomplete. Wow. Just bounced, or it was almost picked off by Matt McCoy, who came in on the nickel package. And Nebraska will have to settle for a field goal. Watch the two guys, Venables and Snoops. Oh, move over. Adjustment. Watch the zone. Watch the quick trap, the quarterback draw, everything. But was it an interception at the end of this play? You can see Crouch by time, by time. Oh, man, Stoops is into it. Well, it looked like it dropped. It looked like it hit the ground uh, to me. Yeah, it hit the ground very clearly. There's a 26-yard field goal attempt for the lead. Josh Brown. He nails it. An interception into three points, but Oklahoma did not give up a touchdown down there. That's big for their defense. Sold out here in Lincoln ever since 1962. Think about that, folks. Go back to 19. 62. Get a seat. Walk up and buy a ticket. Come on in and see the husband. And the kickoff. In the end zone, it'll come out on the on the 20-yard line. Courageous performance from Nate Hibble right here. We saw him do it before. Brown stays in at right tackle. Griffin. A couple of yards in the middle of that time, and uh, as they probe away, let's take a look now at Oklahoma's receptions for the day here, and you can see the tight end Smith leads the way. Well, they have so many different weapons, but the emergence of the tight end, I don't know if it's because of the lack of protection, not being able to get the ball downfield, but the tight end has become a bigger part of this offense than we could ever remember. Well, the big play guy is still savage. He's the one who can get you yards after the reception if they can get it in his hand. Second down. Griffin again. So they're playing it very conservatively coming out from the noisy end down there. No checkoffs. Just very content now if they have to wind up with a punt. And I think and they'll the reason let the, they want to let the clock run out. Right. So they get the wind at their back. Very good not to throw the ball. I think you're playing field position at this time of the game. And they'll have it at their back. Though you saying the fourth quarter belongs to us. And Nebraska saying not so fast. <laughs> we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Gary, this reminds me of Texas A&M, and Oklahoma stayed in the game, stayed in the game, got a big break, a turnover in the fourth quarter, and won that game last year. Well, two good defensive teams. I love the way Bob Stoops played to his punt game right here and took the win. Did not run an incomplete pass to stop the punt. And makes it pay off with that pass to Norman for the first down for Oklahoma. So Josh Norman from Midland, Texas. Gets right to that mark before he goes out of bounds. And to start the fourth quarter, a fresh set of downs for Nate Hibble and OU. The zone blitz has been good to Nebraska. Putting pressure on the quarterback and still getting a safety in the middle of the field. Let's see if they go back to that on second and third down. Four receivers, Hibble up under center. Here comes that end around, Norman. And it was read well on the left side of the defense. Willie Amos came flashing up to cut it off so he could not get outside and force the play. Every time you watch Oklahoma play, you appreciate more and more Josh Heifel a year ago and how he ran this offense. He was a master at reading the blitzes, understanding when he could hold the ball, when he had to get rid of it. Right now, Nate Hibble isn't there yet. Second down. Team blitz. Nibble in trouble. Down at the 20-yard line. And that was Mark Bedrill making the stop for the Huskers. 
Zone blitz, zone blitz. You bring a guy off the corner, you drop back into the center. This is very difficult for a an offense that has no tight end and only one back to handle. You have to be on your on the ball. And this is a quarterback, remember, that didn't get a lot of practice time. Very difficult situation. Nebraska sticking with the four-man defensive line. Doing the job on a slant. Hibble hits Smith. And he is short of the first down. The zone blitz did the job again. Bring an extra guy, drop back, force the quarterback to throw the ball short and make the tackle. Hibble comes off favoring and holding his left arm. I think he's a little dingy. Not even reading the signals very well from the sideline. That forced him into another timeout. So Gross is in to return this punt by Ferguson. Ferguson been in and out here today. Drives one. And they bury him inside the five. Folks, go back to the Texas game. That's exactly what set up the Roy Williams play. The pooch by Duncan. Timeout. Roy Williams off of that pooch against Texas came flying. But they set him out to the left side of the formation. A little bit different offense he's up against than Chris Sims here. And a handoff to D. Rink and he goes nowhere as the defense digs in now with Everidge making a stop. Second down for Nebraska trying to come out from inside the five yard line. Coach has got a crease. His best run of the day. Out of bounds at the 24. Eric Crouch, 19 yards and his biggest run of this game. 11 times he's carried the ball for 23, so you know what this run means. Watch the lineman run into the fullback right here. This is a run all the way, not an option play. You see the fullback and the lineman, the tailback, Diedrich, comes up and gets a great block inside. Quarterback, follow, they call it. Follow the tailback, not part of the option package, but the biggest play so far for Eric Crouch. Breathing room for the Huskers. in the eye. Bring Thomas through in motion and straight goes with him. They'll toss to Diedrich. Diedrich on a toss play. Hines his way to the 29-yard line and Williams is there for the stop. One play gets him out of trouble. Might turn the field upside down against that great Oklahoma defense. I don't believe Nebraska's going to call a play that can be a big turnover play. They're and going to play this. it solid. Remember this too, Gary. OU is down to only one timeout with the seconds now starting to tick on him. A little field position going on. 7.37. OU needs that ball back. So it's an opportunistic defense that will attack Diedrich this time. And it'll be third at about five. You can see how far they've got to go. And first and ten this quarter is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. So that's the distance facing Nebraska. And this is going to be a big play. Third down, I got to put the ball in Eric Crouch's hands. I would run the option play, but I would tell him, be careful of the pitch. Don't just be flapping that ball all around. Rocky Kalmus will be looking for just that. Number 20 ready. So is seven on the other side, and here he comes. Running away. Flag, face mask on the play. Crouch goes down at the 26-yard line. Huge call, huge call. Inadvertent, I think it was Jimmy Wilkerson, number 45, that just got him by the edge of the face mask. It'll be a five-yarder, but it'll be at the first down. Incidental face mask! Is it Brandon Moore, number 46? Is it Heineke, number 89? It looks like it's Heineke. There you see it. Incidental, five yards. He got him right across the face mask. That's all you need to call the five-yarder. Nebraska did come with the option, but Oklahoma was ready for it. On the end around, the double reverse. And they're going to throw off of it. Couch is open. He's got it. Fingers for the end zone. Zips into the end zone as Mike Stuntz, a quarterback and a wingback, number 16, comes in for the trick play, and he hits Crouch, a 63-yarder. All he didn't do was pose 
to the Heisman down there in the end zone, folks, on this play. Both teams have the same play. Oklahoma has it. Kibble slips, stunts, throws it to number seven, catches the ball, the same play. One slips, one doesn't. It might be a trip to the Rose Bowl. So the young man from Council Bluffs, Iowa, St. Albert High School. He had been in a few plays, we are told, by spotter Brian Mobison, but only as a decoy. They brought him on the end of round, and folks remember, he tossed it left-handed. No one had scouted that play. Extra point is up. Got it. So Josh Brown from Foyle, Oklahoma, adds the extra point, and Nebraska leads OU by 10. Watch the pitch here. This pitch is not clean. Stunt does a nice job of catching it. He bobbles it, then runs, takes his time, and hits Crouch right on the numbers. Very interestingly, yesterday, Nebraska on Friday usually practices in the stadium. Greg Solich took his team to the practice field. Maybe he was working on this trick play. So now the ball's on the team with the Oscars. Leading it by 10, and the nation's longest winning streak is in jeopardy. So the throwback to the quarterback works for Nebraska. It's for Oklahoma. Short kick and a fair catch by Norman at the 24 yard line. With 6 11 to go. So now it is up to Hibble. First down. the toss off the action look at Griffin looking for the corner out of bounds picked up about seven yards Kelsey the defender there so Eric Crouch now 11 carries for 23 yards one reception for 63 yards and a touchdown Nebraska now can continue to pressure the quarterback with their zone blitz package. It's not a bit of a gamble at all to bring people and stay in zone. Second down and two. Quarterback draw. Hibble short of the first down, and it is third down. So you go back now to two plays. We have seen Eric Crouch make it work. Now this one, watch. In the first half, after getting knocked down, he's wide open for the throwback. So one works, Gary, and one doesn't yes, work. Yes, that's exactly right. Three big plays on that drive. Crouch's run off the goal line, Heineke's face mask, and then the gamble by Frank Solich that works for a touchdown on the throwback to the quarterback. Third down for Hibble. Off the blitz, he's got the first down. Norman to the 40-yard line. This is a defining game for Solich. And he lost this one at home with the schedule that they've got being the favor here today. There would have been howls. Remember, it took Tom Osborne years before he won a national championship. The feeling in Nebraska, Solich will not be given that much time. But after that call and this game, if the Cornhuskers hold up, then Frank Solich will be the king at least for a weekend around here. Back goes him. Middle high incomplete. Remember, Oklahoma only has one timeout. Should they score, they're going to have to go onside kick. Blitz audible, bring the tight end in. They're going to max protect. Evel is back. Under pressure. Fires incomplete. Nebraska's up now by 10. We're inside of five minutes. There he goes. Jamie Burrow makes the play. They blitz from the side, but they keep Deion Booker in center field. None of those deep glass throws for cheap touchdowns. Coming off the side right here. The linebacker's going to cover. Look at this. No all-out blitz. There's the same. In the middle. If Kimball completes it, he's only going to get a first down, not a touchdown. Good coaching by Greg Bowl. Ferguson. Colonel 
Nelson from the 19. Upended at the 24 yard line. And another chapter is added to the Oklahoma Nebraska lore. And a 15 yard penalty, I think, has just been assessed to the Oklahoma bench. I think Bobby Stoops is still unhappy with that face mask call in that last drive. He thought he got his shirt, not the face mask. Following that play, the big play down to Crouch for the touchdown, and Stoops has not forgot it. First down and 10. The nation's longest winning streak is in jeopardy. OU, 20 straight wins coming in here. There's the young man who's got a great, great future, Tommy Harris, the freshman defensive lineman. The only thing Nebraska needs to do now is not turn the ball over. Run the clock, run the ball, use up all of the 25 second clock. A tremendous football game that usually turns on one play. Oklahoma now out of timeouts. Here's Eric. They're not even handing the ball off anymore. Nope, just content now to bring yes. the clock down with Harris jumping him. About 17 seconds will run Harris. off before the 25 second clock even gets started, and then the 25 second clock will start. Let me just say that about this winning streak, it has been a magnificent run by Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma team. It was something that I don't think anybody saw coming. And even if they lose here today, that does not take away anything. And remember what I said at the top of the day. This could be the first of two games between these two teams. Oklahoma wins the South. What a rematch. That'll be in Dallas on December 1st. That'll be one of the great settings of all time. Because if Nebraska is still city number one, let's say they are, wouldn't Oklahoma love to knock them out of a shot at the Rose Bowl? And who's to say that OU won't have a chance the way the BCS is measured at the end of In the season? In fact, I think the game has been so close on Nebraska's home field, I don't think Oklahoma will drop very far in the polls. Yes, UCLA might have to lose. Something might have to happen, something Good else for them, but they'll still be in the running. Absolutely. I because remember, watch, they've had a quarterback knocked out, yes. and the other one injured. They've still hung in until the end. And now Fagan will try to keep him right in there with 2.22 to go. And they kind of block it. And Larson, who's done an excellent job, Payton gets it off. Fagan rips free, looking for an alley. Nothing doing. Well covered that time. And he'll quickly bring him out. Two minutes and six seconds to go. Forced to run. And he runs for a first down. Well, here are our Chevrolet players of this showdown. Rocky Kalmus held the fourth there at linebacker. And Eric Crouch coming up with the big plays in the money quarter. The Heisman Trophy candidate and one of the leaders showing the way here late for Nebraska. Overthrown. Second down now. And time running out on Stoops and the uh, and the Sooners' great run. Yeah, nice job by Ricketts there, number 28. Uh, Kibble is trying to throw the corner route. Ricketts is cutting off the receiver and forcing him to square off his route, and the two are not connected at all, the quarterback and the receiver. Still have two plays, third and fourth down. Third down and 10. Down at the 31 yard line, John Clanton, the nose man. Yeah, but it was Chris Kelsey that got in there first again, coming around the corner and really flashed.
Campbell out of the pocket. You see him come right around the end right here, forces Hibble inside. And Nebraska continues to blitz. Look at Kelsey in there. Another mistake by that offensive line for Oklahoma. Kelsey forces Hibble wide. A sack, fourth, and long, long, long. The final minute. Winding down in Lincoln. Nebraska beats Oklahoma, and they'll be talking about Frank Solich's call forever. Mike Stutz, number 16, a left-handed quarterback who's also a wingback, finds Eric Crouch, and he goes into the end zone for the touchdown that put the game away. 63 yards on the trick play. The biggest win of Solich's career. Nebraska will stay number one in the BCS. But Oklahoma will circle December 1st, and they will say, we'll meet you in Dallas. And now Stoops will go over to shake hands with his counterpart on the other side. Here comes Solich. Two great football teams slugged it out. Great respect. There's Eric Crouch. He caught the 63-yard touchdown pass. Let's go to Jack Aru, Jack. Coach, congratulations. Obviously the biggest win of your career. Describe how you feel. Uh, I'm really, uh, really proud of our, our players, the way they've played. And, and uh, they've been great all year long to work with. The great chemistry on this football team. And, they just did the things they had to to win. I thought it was two great teams out there today. Uh, both teams, to a degree, struggled offensively at times because of the other team's great defense. Tell and me about the thought process in calling the trick play there where you made Crouch yeah. a receiver. Well, we had uh, we were looking for a time to do it all game long. They, uh, we had done an awful lot of things out of that formation, and they started to bring... And they started off with a guy deep, but as the game went on, they kept bringing him up tighter and tighter to stop some of the running game out of it. And it looked like it was uh, a, we had a chance on that call at that time. The possibility exists that you may have to meet this team yet again in the championship for the Big 12. Well, uh, we play Kansas next week. We're looking forward to that game, and uh, it, it, it's always been a tough game for us down there. And uh, so we're going to take them on at a time and see how this thing ends up. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, Jack. And don't forget, there's a big one against Colorado in Boulder. Oh, you bet. Over Thanksgiving Day weekend, Gary Danielson. I don't think Oklahoma will drop that far. I would rate them very highly playing this game. All right, 20 to 10. Nebraska wins it. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John.